Hey guys, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg, with a quick look at the new 16 gig version of the 5th generation iPod Touch. Now as you're aware, the 5th generation iPod Touch actually launched last October. And what they did at the time was retain the 4th generation iPod Touch as a lower cost option. So the 5th gen started off at $299, the 4th gen started off at $199. Uh, so what they're doing here with the new stripped down model is succeed the fourth generation with a fifth generation iPod Touch with some features removed. Uh, so this starts off at 229 which is still higher than the 199 of the fourth gen iPod Touch but you get the same internal specs and the same four inch uh, LCD screen, LCD IPS display, the same one on the iPhone 5 as well. Uh, so it's a higher quality display than the one that was on the 4th generation iPod Touch, which was a lower quality display of the version on the iPhone 4 and 4S. Now in order to get costs down, they've done a few things here. They've removed the rear eyesight camera, so there is no back camera on this, and they removed the iPod loop. They've also changed some of the design here. So we have these black buttons as opposed to the aluminum buttons on the 32 or 64 gig version, and the standard capacity here is 16 gig instead of 32 gig. It's also available only in this specific color configuration, which alone is unique to the 16 gig model. So you get a black screen with the silver back panel. Now if you got the uh, silver or aluminum, raw aluminum version of the uh, 32 or 64 gig, you actually get a white panel. All right, so let's go ahead and crack this open. I'm just gonna peel off the plastic along the side. All right, should just open up like a clamshell. There we go. All right, so there it is in its plastic tray. So I have a little piece of plastic here, which is holding it down. Let's peel this up. There we go. So now we can just fold the tray back. Releases our iPod Touch. Alright, so there is our 16 gig iPod Touch 5th generation. The first thing I noticed right away is this black Apple logo and iPod logo on the back. So you can see it's kind of printed on the surface of the aluminum as opposed to the polished Apple logo and iPod branding on the back of the 32 and 64 gig version. Otherwise, these are pretty much the same dimensionally. So they're just as thin, they're using the same body but they've redesigned it just slightly to remove those features and to cut costs. So obviously the first thing you notice here is the removal of the camera and the microphone and flash. Now the microphone has been repositioned to the top on the 16 gig model, so you still have the capability of course of recording audio and using FaceTime. There is a FaceTime HD camera on here, so you still have a 720p uh, front facing camera for FaceTime or other apps like Skype. Uh, you still have that black window for radio transparency for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, along the side you see we have those black plastic buttons as opposed to the aluminum buttons on the 32 or 64 gig version and along the bottom you can see that we have those color keyed inserts for the lightning port as well as the headphone jack so they're color keyed to the uh, screen color and you can see we have our cutouts for the speaker and as well we have our loop on the or iPod loop on the 32 and 64 gig version and that's been removed here. Now if you also look at the top again the sleep wake button again is plastic as opposed to aluminum. Now as you can see the 16 gig model still retains the polished mirrored chamfered edge of the uh, higher end model so you can see that hasn't been lost in the uh, uh, race to keep it cheaper. Now inside the packaging we'll also find our literature here so we have hello and we should have some Apple stickers in here somewhere, so there are the Apple stickers, iPod Touch info, and this is just some quick information of iOS 6, which is of course what this is launching with at the time of this video. Now we also have our lightning cable for charging and syncing our iPod Touch, and we have a set of earpods, which again do not contain the remote and microphone. That's pretty normal for iPods, they generally do not ship with earpods that contain the remote and microphone. You have to get an iPhone or you can buy those separately. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time. I'm just going to tap and hold the sleep wake button. You get the Apple logo, and the, while that's booting up, let me just point out that I think it's kind of nice that we have this aluminum finish around the black screen because most Apple devices right now, if you get a black screen, you get a, a black or slate-colored aluminum bezel. So having this shiny aluminum around the black screen actually looks kind of sharp. It's kind of a nice design. I actually like to see this in other Apple products. So let's go ahead and start this up. Pretty straightforward, pretty familiar with the setup for iOS 6. All right, so we're all set up and ready to use our iPod Touch 5th generation. And if you see my review of the iPod Touch 5th generation, it's pretty much the same thing. You get the same features, including Siri integration. You get your drop-down menu. You get your messaging. You get your internal speaker. You have 
your front-facing 720p FaceTime camera for FaceTime, and you have Passbook and everything else you've come to expect from iOS 6. So there really is no sacrifice here in terms of software or features. You also get the same internal specs. So let's go ahead and run some benchmarks just to confirm that there really is no difference between this and the 32 gig version. Now, if you look at our Geekbench scores, you can see they're basically the same with small variations, and they have the same internal specs. So they both have the Apple A5 dual core processor running at about 800 megahertz. And they also have half a gig of RAM. Now if you compare this to the uh, fourth generation iPod Touch, you can see it's almost double the performance, which uh, is a big improvement because uh, the fourth generation only had a single core processor. This was an A4 processor uh, clocked at 800 megahertz and had only 256 megs of RAM. So big improvement there in terms of overall performance. Now we still have a dedicated camera app, which of course only works with the front-facing camera. So you can record video or you can snap a few stills. Again, this video camera is capable of recording video at 720p. It's the exact same camera on all the other iOS devices capable of recording video at 720p. So in conclusion, I definitely think you get a much better iPod Touch for that $30 price increase. You get much better internal specs for keeping up with the latest versions of iOS. So iOS 7 is about to launch, and you can definitely bet on that working on this device. You also get that nice uh, anodized aluminum finish, that better 4-inch LCD IPS display, and that better front-facing 720p HD camera for FaceTime HD. However, you lose one big feature for a lot of the people is a big issue, which is that rear firing camera. Of course, this was only a sub one megapixel camera, so not a great camera to begin with, but it's nice to have a camera available on your iOS device because a lot of apps can take advantage of it and a lot of social networking apps can take advantage of it. And I think it's particularly useful on the iPod Touch because a lot of people buy these because they can't afford or don't have a smartphone. A lot of kids use this, so it's nice to have a camera built into your iPod Touch at all times. Uh, and now if you want a camera on your iPod Touch, you have to spend $100 more. So for a lot of people, that's kind of a controversial point with this new product. So $70 is a pretty big savings here. So although you give up the camera, you do retain all the hardware uh, that make this a great device. And certainly you can run iOS 7 and all the great features of iOS 7 uh, still work on this device. You just lose the camera and you have the standard 16 gig capacity. Now in terms of capacity, I think 16 gig is enough, especially if you don't have a camera built in, taking a lot of photos and video to fill up the camera or fill up the space. Now a lot of apps are starting to take up a lot of space, especially gaming apps, so that's something to consider. You do have to manage how many apps you install on the device with only 16 gigs, but it's manageable. So overall, definitely a device I recommend. It's too bad it doesn't have a camera built in, at least some sort of camera, even if it's a lower resolution, but it's still a great device and it will be able to service you for quite a few more years because the specs have been bumped up to keep up with the latest releases of iOS. So iOS 7 is about to launch and I'm sure that this device will uh, be compatible with it while the fourth generation iPod Touch may not be. So that's gonna do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.